What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. You're talking about physical contact and proof from another, another system, another planet, another intelligence. That's got to be the biggest event in history. And it's real and it's there. I'm convinced that what I saw is absolute proof of that. There is, there is no way we could have created those systems. There's no way we could have made the disks, the power supplies, anything to go with them. Bob Lazar's assertions about Element 115 are among the most talked about in UFO and conspiracy theory circles, largely due to their intriguing blend of advanced alien technology and secretive government operations. Lazar claimed that during his time at the S-4 facility near Area 51, he encountered alien spacecraft powered by Element 115. This element, he argued, was central to the craft's propulsion systems, enabling them to manipulate gravity and perform maneuvers that defy the laws of physics as we understand them. He described Element 115 as a powerful energy source, used not only for propulsion, but also to power various systems within the spacecraft. One of the more striking aspects of Lazar's narrative is his claim that Element 115 had stable isotopes, contrary to the highly unstable Muscovium isotopes discovered by scientists in 2003. Lazar suggested these stable isotopes had a significantly longer half-life, making Element 115 a practical energy source. He even hinted at a depth of knowledge about different isotopes of this element, some stable and some not, suggesting a level of interaction that goes beyond mere speculation. Additionally, Lazar's story is steeped in notions of covert government knowledge. He alleged that the US government had been in possession of Element 115, and consequently the technology it powered, long before its recognition by the scientific community. He linked this possession directly to the government's alleged retrieval and study, possibly even reverse engineering of alien spacecraft. These claims have fueled numerous conspiracy theories, suggesting that the government has secret knowledge about extraterrestrial beings and technology, often cited in discussions about UFO cover-ups and clandestine government projects. While Lazar's claims are undeniably fascinating and have captivated many, they remain unverified and are frequently met with skepticism by the scientific community. I am telling the truth. I, I, I've tried to prove that. Uh... The primary reasons for this skepticism are the lack of empirical evidence supporting his claims and the inconsistencies between his narrative and established scientific knowledge. Now here is where things get interesting, which add credibility to Bob's claims of element 115. The discovery of Moscovium happened after Lazar was talking about it for some time. Back in 2003, a group of Russian and American scientists working together at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna, Russia, made a remarkable breakthrough. They managed to create this new element using a particle accelerator, which is a bit like a super-powered microscope that can see atoms. They did this by smashing together atoms of americium and calcium. Think of it like a cosmic game of pool at an atomic level. This creation was initially named Ununpentium, a bit of a tongue twister, right? But later it got the name Moscovium as a nod to the Moscow region where it was discovered. Now Moscovium isn't quite what you'd call a stable element. It's incredibly unstable, actually. The isotopes, which are like different versions of the element, don't last long. We're talking milliseconds to a few seconds. This makes it pretty much unusable for anything long term. Imagine trying to use a battery that only lasts a few seconds. Not very practical, right? It's also super radioactive, so you'd need some serious equipment and safety measures to work with it. Here's where things get a bit more Hollywood. Bob Lazar, a name you might have heard, had some pretty out there claims about Element 115 long before it was officially discovered. He said it was a stable, energy-rich element used in alien spacecraft he allegedly saw at a secret facility near Area 51. Now, scientists have raised their eyebrows at this because Moscovium is nothing like what Lazar described. It's super unstable, and not something you'd find powering a spaceship, or anything else for that matter. There's also been a lot of chatter about Lazar's background. Well, they're trying to make me a non-person. Well, the schools that I went to, the hospital that I was born at, past job, and uh, essentially nothing comes up with my name in it. He claimed to have worked at some pretty prestigious places, but when people checked, there were no records of him there. It's a bit like saying you played for a famous football team, but there's no record of you ever being on the team. So what's the takeaway from all this? Well, the discovery of Muscovium is a big deal in science, 
showing us new things about the atomic world. Bob Lazar's story about using gravity waves for alien spacecraft propulsion is something straight out of a sci-fi movie, and it's been a hot topic for those interested in UFOs and unexplained phenomena. He claimed that while working at this secret S-4 facility near Area 51, he saw alien spacecraft that used gravity waves for movement. Imagine spacecraft twisting and warping spacetime itself to zip around at speeds faster than light, doing things that would leave our best aircrafts in the dust. That's what Lazar talked about, a kind of technology that's like nothing we have or even understand today. Now, he linked all this to Element 115, saying it was used in a reactor to create these gravity waves. The idea was that this element could somehow generate a massive gravitational field, letting the spacecraft control gravity waves at will. But here's the catch, the real Element 115, known as Muscovium, is nothing like what Lazar described. It's super unstable and breaks down incredibly fast, so the idea of it being a stable, long-lasting power source doesn't really hold up. Lazar's claims take a real leap from what we know about physics. Today's science doesn't support the idea of manipulating gravity for propulsion. It's a fascinating idea, sure, but we just don't have any evidence or technology that can do this yet. It's like he's talking about a whole different realm of physics, way beyond our current understanding. While theoretical physics does play around with concepts like warp drives and bending spacetime, these are still in the realm of theory, not something we've actually seen or made happen. The discovery of gravitational waves back in 2016 was a real game-changer in astrophysics. It's like we had this incredible prediction from Albert Einstein about how massive objects like black holes could send ripples through spacetime. And then, suddenly we had the tools to actually see these ripples. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO for short, played a huge role in this. They have these ultra-sensitive setups in Louisiana and Washington that can pick up the tiniest distortions in space-time, caused by gravitational waves passing through Earth. What's really cool is how they first detected these waves. It was from two massive black holes, way out in space, about 1.3 billion light-years away, smashing into each other. The collision was so powerful that it sent these waves across the cosmos, and the precision of LIGO's instruments is mind-blowing. They detected changes smaller than a proton's diameter. This discovery kicked off a whole new way of looking at the universe, adding gravitational waves to our toolkit alongside the usual telescopes that observe light. But here's where things get a bit tricky. Bob Lazar and his claims about using gravity waves for powering alien spacecraft. His story is quite different from what LIGO found. Lazar talked about artificially creating and controlling these waves for space travel, which is a whole different ballgame. The gravitational waves LIGO detected are natural occurrences from colossal cosmic events, not something we can make or harness for zooming around in space. In the science world, Lazar's ideas about using gravity waves for propulsion don't really line up with what we know and can do. We're still at a point where manipulating gravity waves like he described is beyond our reach. It's one thing to detect these waves from cosmic events. It's quite another to create and control them for space travel. While physicists do play around with theories of warp drives and bending spacetime, it's important to remember these are still in the realm of theory. Bob Lazar really stirred the pot with his tales about Area 51 and this mysterious S-4 facility, didn't he? So let's chat about what he said and why it's got people talking for years. First up, Area 51, it's real, that's for sure. Tucked away in the Nevada desert, it's part of the Nevada Test and Training Range and run by the US Air Force. The place is shrouded in secrecy, which you can imagine has sparked all sorts of wild theories. Some people think they're testing experimental aircraft and weapons there, while others go full sci-fi, believing it's all about aliens and their spacecraft. What really put Area 51 on the map was Bob Lazar spilling the beans in the late 1980s. Before then, it was pretty much just known to the military and local folks. But Lazar's stories, they turned it into this epicenter of alien conspiracy theories, making it a household name and the subject of countless TV shows and movies. Now, Lazar's claims about this S-4 site near Area 51 are where things get really juicy. He claimed he worked there, at an even more top-secret place than Area 51. According to him, S-4 was all about reverse-engineering alien tech, focusing on how their spacecraft zoomed around. He even described this place as having these hangars built into a mountain, with doors camouflaged to blend in with the desert. Inside, he said he saw actual flying saucers and the big bombshell, 
Lazar claimed he saw alien spacecraft at S4 and talked about their propulsion systems, mentioning this mysterious element 115 as their power source. But here's the thing, no one has been able to prove any of this. There's been a lot of back and forth, but no solid evidence to back up Lazar's tales of S4 or his encounters with alien tech. The US government, for their part, has kept mum about any S4 facility. While they admit Area 51 is a thing, they haven't given any credence to Lazar's alien stories. And despite the lack of hard evidence, people can't get enough of these stories. They keep the mystery of Area 51 alive, fueling endless speculation and fascination with what might be hidden away in the Nevada desert. In the realm of UFO enthusiasts and those intrigued by the extraterrestrial, few names stand out as much as Bob Lazar. This unassuming figure burst onto the public scene in the late 1980s, presenting a narrative that would challenge the general consensus on UFOs and spark countless debates. Uh, flying saucers, flying discs. Bob Lazar wasn't always synonymous with UFO lore. In fact, by profession, he was a physicist. According to his own account, he was hired to work in a secret section of Area 51, the United States' most infamous and secretive military base. The facility, named S-4, supposedly housed projects that were not just top secret, but also otherworldly. The essence of Lazar's story revolves around his claims that he was recruited to work on a project involving the reverse engineering of alien technology. He described a scenario where human scientists, like himself, were attempting to understand and replicate the advanced technological marvels that were purportedly recovered from extraterrestrial visitors. This wasn't just about stealth aircraft or advanced weaponry, this was technology from the stars. Bob Lazar's revelation was more than just a personal account. It was a challenge to the US government's stance on UFOs. It was a direct claim that they not only knew about these visitors, but had tangible physical proof of their existence. To some, Lazar became a hero, a whistleblower lifting the veil on one of the biggest cover-ups in human history. To others, he was seen as a hoaxer, weaving an intricate tale for attention or perhaps other motivations. Over the years, his credibility has been both supported and attacked, with factors such as his alleged educational background and employment history becoming points of contention. However, whether one believes in the veracity of his story or not, Bob Lazar's impact on the world of UFO research and popular culture is undeniable. He opened a Pandora's box of questions, many of which remain unanswered to this day. One of the most compelling parts of Bob Lazar's story revolves around his description of a fleet of nine flying saucers. These weren't just models or simulations. Lazar claimed that these were actual extraterrestrial craft stored at the S-4 facility near Area 51. Each of these saucers, according to Lazar, had its own unique design and size, suggesting either different alien civilizations or various models from one advanced extraterrestrial race. The craft were not just for observation either. Lazar stated that he was given limited access to one particular craft, which he codenamed Sport Model. This saucer was sleek and smooth, shaped like a classic UFO, and had an interior that appeared both organic and biomechanical. Inside the Sport Model, Lazar described the absence of any traditional human-designed controls like buttons, switches or levers. Instead, the craft was operated by a series of molded seats and panels that seemed to respond directly to touch and intention. Everything about its build suggested that it wasn't constructed for human physiology. The absence of right angles, the seamless nature of its construction, and the smooth metallic surfaces all hinted at an engineering knowledge far surpassing our current understanding. More intriguingly, Lazar claimed that these craft utilized a propulsion system that was not just advanced, but entirely alien to our current scientific understanding. He talked of a power source referred to as Element 115, which was used to generate gravity waves, allowing the sources to essentially fall in the direction they wanted to travel. This method of propulsion, if true, would revolutionize our understanding of physics and space travel. But where did these craft come from? Lazar didn't claim to know their exact origins, but he did suggest they were part of a long-standing back engineering project by the US government, the aim to decipher the technology for potential military and scientific applications. Throughout his many interviews, the consistent nature of Bob's descriptions about these nine mysterious crafts has been a cornerstone for many of his believers. 
It either lends credibility to his tale or showcases a deeply intricate and unwavering commitment to his narrative. Regardless of where one stands on the spectrum of belief, the story of the Nine Sources is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating pieces of UFO lore in the modern era. Bob Lazar's tales from his alleged time at the S-4 facility delve into more than just descriptions of physical craft. They provide a glimpse into technology that, by his account, defies our current scientific understanding. One of the core tenets of Lazar's revelations is that the propulsion systems of these extraterrestrial craft operated on principles that we have yet to fully grasp in terrestrial science. He frequently spoke of Element 115, which at the time of his initial disclosures had not been synthesized or identified in the periodic table. This element, according to Lazar, served as the fuel for the spacecraft. It's not merely about using it as a source of energy, but it's the manner in which it supposedly manipulated gravity that stands out. The crafts didn't just fly in our conventional sense, they generated their own gravitational fields, allowing them to warp and bend spacetime. This mode of travel would mean that rather than moving through space, space itself would move around the craft. But how can one even begin to control gravity, a force we are only beginning to understand? Lazar described devices within the craft known as gravity amplifiers. These, combined with the use of element 115, were said to produce a gravitational wave focused by three distinct cylindrical structures underneath the craft. The implication here is significant. Mastering gravity would open up possibilities not only for space travel, but also for how we understand the very fabric of the universe. Furthermore, the craft's interiors, as per Lazar's account, were just as enigmatic. Without conventional controls or recognizable interfaces, it's postulated that the craft might have had a direct connection with its pilot, suggesting a biomechanical or even telepathic mode of operation. The cockpit of the sport model craft he detailed was devoid of sharp angles, and everything seemed to be molded from a singular seamless material. This design approach raises questions about the manufacturing techniques of these supposed extraterrestrial civilizations. How can a civilization craft objects without seams, joints, or evident assembly lines. The truly intriguing aspect of Lazar's claim was that, at the time he made it, element 115 did not exist on the periodic table. It was a supposed material with properties that sounded straight out of a science fiction novel. Skeptics quickly seized upon this, using it as fodder to debunk Lazar's tales. However, in a twist of scientific advancement, the element was synthesized in labs in 2003 and added to the periodic table, known as Muscovium. However, it's crucial to point out a significant difference between Lazar's claims and the scientifically synthesized version of the element. The element 115 produced in laboratories is highly unstable, decaying rapidly, and not showing any of the marvelous gravitational properties described by Lazar. Lazar anticipated this discrepancy, asserting that the stable form of element 115, the one with the unique properties he described, was likely found in regions of the universe with different star production mechanisms than our own. Bob Lazar's discussions on element 115 serve as a linchpin to his broader narrative. While the scientific community's version doesn't directly validate his claims, its very existence provides a tantalizing hint that there's still much about the universe we don't understand. Whether you view Lazar as a whistleblower or a fabricator, discussions surrounding Element 115 demonstrate the fascinating interplay between fringe claims and mainstream science. As the years have passed, debates have raged over the validity of Lazar's claims. Yet, his consistent and detailed accounts of technology beyond our understanding continue to fuel discussions in both scientific and UFO enthusiast circles. Whether one views him as a whistleblower or a storyteller, the tales he has spun serve as a captivating exploration of what might be possible beyond the limits of our current knowledge. In the dynamic world of UFO stories, testimonies and whistleblowers, it's not uncommon for accounts to evolve, get embellished, or even get retracted as the years roll by. Yet there stands Bob Lazar, a singular figure whose story has remained consistent since it first broke into the public consciousness in the late 1980s. What adds weight to Lazar's claims isn't just the detail in his revelations, but the unyielding consistency with which he's presented them, irrespective of the audience or the format. 
be it radio interviews, documentaries, or casual conversations. From the moment Lazar came forward with his astonishing claims about extraterrestrial technology at Area 51's S foresight, skepticism surrounded his narrative. Critics and debunkers came out in droves, armed with a myriad of reasons to dismiss Lazar's claims. They cited a lack of concrete evidence, questioned his educational and professional background, and often painted him as a fabricator seeking fame or financial gain. However, in the face of such overwhelming scrutiny, where many would falter or revise their statements, Lazar's central narrative about the alien crafts, their propulsion systems, and the secret workings of S4 have stayed the same. Time, as they say, is the best judge. Over the three decades since Lazar's claims were made, certain aspects of his story have received unintentional validation. The existence of Element 115, once a crucial but fantastical part of his tale, became a reality when scientists officially added it to the periodic table in 2003. While our synthesized version of the element differs from Lazar's descriptions and its stability is fleeting, its very discovery gives pause to even the most ardent skeptics. Lastly, it's worth noting the personal cost to Lazar. Coming forward with such a narrative, true or not, puts one in the crosshairs of public opinion and often personal and professional alienation. Lazar has expressed on numerous occasions his regret about coming forward and the impact it had on his personal life. If his objective was fame or financial gain, one would expect him to double down, to produce more claims, to keep himself in the spotlight. Yet Lazar did the opposite. He receded from the limelight, rarely giving interviews and maintained his initial tale. This behavior contrasts sharply with those who spin stories for personal gain. It begs the question, why would someone maintain a hoax for over three decades, especially when the personal toll is so high? And as always, thanks for watching.